Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey. Well, it's exciting to be here for another episode of Jim and Java, and I hope you're enjoying our subject videos that we're doing on Tuesdays and that this Q&A time that we have on Saturdays is also helpful for you as well too. If you're interested in hearing more about what we're doing, you can go out to Instagram, follow me at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. People are really enjoying our Monday three things to know for the week on the Wednesday fundraising and film, kind of a lighthearted look at development using some of our latest movies out there, some of my favorites. And then lastly, our Thursday morning tips and coffee with Jim, uh, giving you some development tips. So if you can't get enough on this YouTube channel, the Instagram is out there as well too. Well, let's dive right into our first question today. Our question today is from Susan in Bloomingdale, Illinois. And Susan asks, do you have any suggestions on how to hire a development director? Well, Susan, thank you so much for that question. And that really is a little bit more complicated than you might think it is. Because hiring a development director really has so many factors to play into it. First of all, the size of your organization is extremely important. Are you a startup organization? Are you an executive director who's running the organization all by yourself? Or are you a larger organization? Can you handle someone who may have experience, which means that in all likelihood, they're gonna have high salary demands with that? Does it mean that you need to bring on somebody part-time? Do you need to be thinking about someone 20 hours, 40 hours? Or do you need to be possibly thinking, could I do the same thing and get as much accomplished with a really good, effective administrative assistant? So all those things are so important. But honestly, the first thing that I start with is what are you really hoping to accomplish with the development director? If you're an executive director and you're busy in a whole area, a wide variety of areas, whether that be with your activities and responsibilities as an executive director or president, or at home, taking care of needs at home with your family, you've got to really say, am I trying to bring this person on so that I don't have to do development and fundraising activities? Because if that's the case, that really is the wrong reason to hire a development director. You've got to learn as executive director or the president of your organization that major donors especially, but most donors are going to really look to you for the answers to their bigger questions. Very rarely have I seen someone make a very large or a mega gift, 25, 50, 100,000, 250,000 or more without talking to the executive director or the uh, president of the organization. So please know that if you bring on a development director, that doesn't mean that you're washing your hands of all the responsibilities related to development. You've got to really look and see and know that your responsibilities may even get greater. They will just change a bit. I've used the analogy before and the concept and principle that I've found that a good executive director spends 80% of their time doing development. Now, if you know me well enough, you know the definition of development is the combination of public relations, recruitment, and fundraising. And as a executive director or president, you know that being a spokesperson, being the leader of the organization, you set the tone publicly and meeting with people and, and interacting with those individuals. It's very tough to not do public relations, recruitment, or fundraising within your responsibilities. So hopefully you can understand where that 80% comes from. What that means is by hiring a development director, you're hiring someone who will be more laser focused in the area of maximizing your time, maximizing the time of the, of the major donor or the donor, and maximizing your board and your duties and responsibilities. They may be the ones who call ahead 
to get appointments with major donors. They may even lead out in those appointments with major donors, but you need to come along. You need to also set the tone, maybe even share inspirational and encouraging stories of changed lives. They may early on be able to go on appointments without you, but as I said, as your involvement gets more and more in the total responsibilities of being an executive director, you're gonna find that major donors, before they give any significant gift, are, wanna, are going to wanna know all the ins and outs and workings of that. So be careful when you go to look for someone. Now I mentioned some possibilities. You can look for an individual who has three to five or more years of experience and you can hire them as a full-time person. You can also bring someone on who's totally new development in a full-time capacity. You can also bring someone on who is new or also has experience in a part-time basis, 20 hours a week. I think I've mentioned a few times on this program that I have had some great success lately with hiring part-time representatives to be on the phone with our major donors. We've seen great success with that. And those are individuals who have potentially day jobs, they have responsibilities at home that take up the other 20%, but they are laser focused on 20 hours developing relationships with our major donors. And so it's important that you understand that somebody can accomplish a lot in 20 hours. Then I also mentioned an administrative assistant. I worked 25 years on loan a couple days a week with one of the arms of our organization and all I did was give direction to a handful over the years of highly qualified administrative assistants and I saw amazing things accomplished. We were raising 500, 600, 700, 800, even a million dollars at one point with just me and administrative assistant. We were being able to do five, six, and seven dinners, banquets around the country for our partners, just my, me alone with a administrative assistant. And getting the right administrative assistant, who's going to be the front lines, who's going to answer the phone calls, who's going to respond to letters and correspondence with major donors, who's going to help go out ahead and set up some of those appointments and put me in front of them made a huge difference. So you need to look at that. Now, one of the things that was brought up recently to me was, could I bring on someone in a four percentage basis that I would give them a percentage of what they raised? And you need to understand, as good as that sounds, it violates every ethical standard and every standard of conduct that's out with most governing organizations, whether that's Association for Fundraising Professionals, whether it's the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability, all those organizations see consultants or fundraisers who come in and raise for a percentage profit as, as an unethical practice. And so if you have someone offer that to you, I would run the other direction because they put you at risk of violating standards. And if you want to get any good rating with ECFA or GuideStar or any of the others, you need to look at all your practices and principles. And honestly, they see you bringing on someone for a percentage as that person is just interested in the money. Now you may know this person, they may be genuinely very interested in what you're doing, they may have a great relationship with donors, but I can tell you that the organizations that oversee fundraising activities see this as a conflict of interest and see this as uh, individuals who are trying to develop relationships for a profit and for personal responsibilities. So be careful of that. I hope this helped you. Uh, I'll talk on another broadcast about some of the responsibilities of a development director so that when you're hiring and you're looking to hire someone that you look at these particular qualifications because it's so important that you look at all the qualifications, especially 
uh, the ability to connect well with people, but an understanding of how to build relationships and be good with people is so important. So Susan, I hope that helped. And for all of you who are watching, thank you so much for taking the time. I know that you're like me and want to make a difference in your community and even for eternity, and I thank you. And if that is your desire to grow your organization and make a difference in the world, subscribe to this channel and be a part of this ever-growing community. And as I say, we're always, we're going to strive to increase our income and reach the goal of being coming fully funded. Thanks a lot, I'll see you in the next video.